Um, good morning, Shedders. Um, thank you very much for joining us this morning. We have Clifford Warry with us. He's a tutor in carpentry and joinery. And this morning, he's going to spend the next 40 minutes talking about keeping our shedder safe in our workshop and introducing you to um, safe way and safe practice in using some equipment that might be in that workshop. So I'll pass you over to Clifford and there will be some Q&A at the end where um, you'll have time to ask any questions. Thanks a million. Well, hi, hi everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Eva. So yeah, as, as Eva said, I'm Clifford. Uh, and today we're going to cover some health and safety general uh, and quite condensed health and safety uh, regarding the, the workshop there and, and the men's sheds. Uh, first of all, just to tell you a wee bit about myself. Um, I started off as a site carpenter, uh, then progressed into um, doing some bench joinery work as well, more so in the workshop, you know, getting to, to use a bit more machinery, uh, that kind of thing. And then it's kind of in my mid-20s then, I started to do some training then, uh, mainly for, for younger guys, uh, the likes of apprentices uh, and young guys coming into the construction industry. So it's quite nice. I always say that at the at the men's shares. It's quite nice to to uh, let's say I'll, I'll be careful how I word this. Um, it's quite nice to um, have a few guys with a bit more experience under the belt as opposed to some guys at sixteen or seventeen. So um, progressed on then through through that, uh, and then probably about ten years ago, um, I was contacted by an organisation there um, in North Belfast um, who who had a men's shed under, under their umbrella and I was asked to do some training for them and really it has kind of snowballed then from, from then. Uh, e even to this day I, I, I use some of the training that, um, that I picked up in those first days at North Belfast men's shed uh, and I'll, I'll mention that later on then as well. I have then you know over the last 10 years I have done training for a number of, of men's sheds you know mainly in, in the north um, as far north probably as Clock Mills and, and Cushing Daw, quite close to home for me, uh, right down then to Warren Point and Eskillen, uh, Botmas Strangford, uh, quite a few uh, in the north. So this is kind of new to me as well, uh, sort of uh, talking to you guys uh, from mainly, mainly the south maybe, uh, and Eva then as well. And, and, it's, and it's great, I must say. So the, the purpose of the training, uh, guys, usually, um, I like to explain then where, where I'm coming from, and sometimes it can be slightly difficult just just to um, just to talk to guys that are you know obviously the guys that I'm always talking to in the men's shed they're coming from various fields and backgrounds, so guys who have very little uh, knowledge and understanding or experience in, in woodwork and machinery and, and power tools to the guys that are just just off the off the tools maybe uh, quite recently. Okay, so generally. I'm there for two reasons. Um, the first one is kind of, it's a chicken and egg scenario uh, regarding funding. So sometimes then there's funding available for machinery, power tools, or hand tools and equipment, etc. But alongside that um, machinery that there's training required. So then that's where I come in. And that's, that's what I say about the chicken and the egg scenario. So they need the training and they need the machine. So sometimes I'm used at a quite early stage when there's new machinery and equipment and dust extraction systems coming in where, where I'm used then to, to, to get the guys up and running on those machines. The other reason then would be, and, and God forbid, uh, if anything was to, to happen, maybe, you know, an accident, maybe in a workshop in the main shed, well then the question would be asked probably about the training and authorised use, etc. So that's also where I come in. So on my days, usually when, when I'm allowed to go out onto uh, onto site, on you know, on, on, on to the floor per se, I would then do a bit of training, and I would actually watch the guys then as well. Uh, after I demonstrate, I would watch the guys using the, the power tools and equipment, and I would do a quite simple assessment then. Some guys are happy enough in the main shed um, to say to me, "Well, uh, no, that's a, a fairly complex machine." And I, I don't really need to use that. I would really only be using the sanders, cordless drill, jigsaw maybe, or, or so on. I, I don't need to use the, the bandsaw or crosscut saw, etc. 
And I would, I would take that into consideration. And then I certificate then the guys that are deemed competent to use those, um, those pieces of equipment and machinery there. And I then uh, certify that uh, for the guys to keep on record there. So usually then the questions asked as well, you know, regarding maybe the, the turnaround of new guys coming to the men's shed and how, how, they, how they go about getting trained. And, and usually then over the last number of years, the, the best way we've managed that uh, or the best advice that I give is that those that haven't been deemed competent as yet work alongside those who have uh, until then there's a number of guys or a rough number of guys there that, 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 that can be trained then I can take a, a small number of guys in for training uh, and assess them as being competent then as well. So that's that's kind of then where where I come from and, and really the, the the purpose of my training. Today as I say is slightly different you know this is this is a webinar obviously giving you guys a bit more information but I'm going to try my best here to do a wee bit of uh, not full-scale practical but but more practical uh, up behind me here so I'll, I'll just move around here and hopefully you can still uh, hear me okay. Okay, guys, so the first thing we need to talk about really is uh, power supply in the workshop. Obviously, to be using the likes of the, the tools and equipment and machines that, that we all have, we, we need to have power supply. So, uh, again, um, there's, there's some um, deviation and in, in guidance here and, and some queries regarding the, the, the voltage then that this required. Now, on, on site here, obviously, we need to be using 110 volts, okay? Uh, you know, by, by law, but then in the workshop scenario, that's that's 240. So the majority of you guys then are always working in the workshop scenario, so 240 then uh, is sufficient. I have had a few queries in the past where guys do some uh, external work, okay, so they maybe go out, um, out on to, um, out on the site per se, you know, to do maybe small projects, say in a in a playground or a, or a primary school, making you know those guys that made mud kitchens, you know, for primary schools, and those were being taken out to be fitted. Other guys were were going out to do planters uh, and that kind of thing, so they were having to take that right onto site. And the guidance that I would have to, to 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 give there is that if you're out away from the workshop setting, you need to be using at 110 volts, okay, or using a step down transformer. Uh, from 240 volts to 110 volts. Um, regarding the tools and equipment themselves, okay, um, we still have to follow the um, portable appliance testing as well. Okay, so they, they have to be um, they have to be deemed uh, ready for use, okay, and safe safe for use. Uh, we we have to follow those those guidelines. There there is a um, there is an example that I, that I I'll not mention any any um, share in particular, but. I was down doing this early uh, chat uh, early in the morning, and the guy said, "Yeah, we we have a we have a bench saw, a circular saw, that um, that is homemade. So as soon as I heard homemade, well, the alarm bells started to ring. So the guy took me out to show me the, the circular saw. Now I have to say, it, it was a really well made saw. Okay, it was the old Singer sewing machine base, and had a piece of kitchen worktop as, as the, the table and then the motor in below feeding the, the, the circular saw uh, blade. Now, as I said, it was well made and I told the guys if I had that at home in my garage, I would be happy to use that, that saw. But for, for the purposes of the main shed, it can't, it can't be used. Okay, so it had to be taken out of use. And that's exactly the same then uh, if we have any machines that are deemed to be unsafe um, with guards missing, they have to be taken out of use on, until they're fixed then by uh, someone authorised to, to fix those things. That, that seems very simplistic, but sometimes it's the case where we have an experienced guy using a machine and maybe the spring isn't working, so I could maybe even give you that example. The spring maybe isn't working on this this guard here, okay. I'm hoping you can all see that, okay, okay. And I, I have I have saw plenty of job saws like so that that this this spring uh, isn't returning. So there's maybe an experienced guy there knowing that he can use that safely without having that guard in place. But we're not all as experienced uh, as this guy, so we then need to make sure that this 
machine is taken out of use until that is fixed in. Um, there's also other scenarios regarding, say for example, uh, a circular saw. So a circular bench saw can be used for many purposes, uh, including bevel cutting, um, using certain saddles and jigs. Uh, it can be used for rebating as well. But sometimes to do those jobs, we have to take off the crown guard and riding neck. And again, if you're doing that at home, in your garage or, or, or in, a, in a, a place that's, that's private, that's, that's okay and that's, that's up to you. But in the main shed, you know, we cannot do that. Well, obviously, we're doing away with all our authorised use, our insurance, et cetera, et cetera, let alone um, you know, the, the dangers um, that, 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 are, that arise from, from doing the likes of that. <clears throat> so that, that kind of moves us on then to um, where this information comes from then. Okay, so this information isn't really something that I, that I pluck from the sky. It's all taken from you know, official legislation, okay? The kind of gray area, again, regarding the main shed is, most of this is, is regarding um, people in a, in a workplace, okay? So then we obviously have the employer and the employee. We also have the self-employed then, um, which is quite common in the construction industry. You guys would be most, if I had to pigeonhole you guys, uh, I don't like to do that, but if I had to pigeonhole you guys, you, you guys are actually closest to being uh, self-employed, okay? Because you're coming to the main shed by, by choice, obviously, okay? So then you are, are responsible then to look out for yourself and others, and it's almost self-managed, okay? So even that you have little experience in the use of machinery, uh, if you're common sense, tells you that, that that circular saw is dangerous or or um, there, there's something doesn't sound right with it, well then that's up to you then to, to look into that then as part of the main share as a whole then, okay? <clears throat> one, one other wee thing just on um, power supply then, I, I mentioned the, the, the voltage etc. So, um, Generally in the workshop, we'll be using um, 240 volts, okay? So if I can just grab a couple of leads. So obviously for the, 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 the power tools and equipment, they, they need to be powered in, okay? We need electricity. So one, one danger that sometimes gets overlooked is the extension leads, okay? And it can be quite dangerous. So myself, you know, from my experience uh, and maybe in a joiner, I, I have actually three extension leads, okay? So um, I've got two of them here. So I've got the, the, the small one, I think it's a 1.5 meter, okay? I've got a, a six meter Jojo lead, and then I have the, the, the 25 meter here then as well. And the reason I have those, and most joiners would have the lights, and, and all of the main shed really should have uh, a variety of lengths. You want to be using, sorry, you want to be using as little lead as, as possible, okay? So in other words, if I'm, if I'm working in this position and I have, um, you know, power supply that's three meters away uh, and this is no good to me, well then I'm up into using the 25 meter lead and that'll, that'll power my job fine. But the problem with that is, with this being coiled up, okay? So I'm only going to be using three meters of this 25 meter lead and there's 22 meters of this is in coil. And if I'm doing something continuous, okay, there's going to be a heat build up then, uh, and that's going to start to, to heat up the protection here, and that's going to just cause that to melt, okay. And again, there's another. Um, I shouldn't say it's a it's a funny story, but we were we were okay, and there was there was very little damage done. But there's another example I can give uh, from a men's shed, and again, I'm not mentioning where I was. So one morning, a very cold winter's morning, I arrived at the men's shed. Uh, and the guys then greeted me, they were in the workshop and it was, it was really, really cold. One of the coldest days of the year. So the guy said, well, we'll just get set up. This is the workshop scenario, but we have um, a more, you know, a warmer uh, place that we take tea that we can use, sort of like a hall. Uh, we'll go in for this general chat that we always start off with uh, and we'll get a cup of coffee and then we'll go out to the workshop. So that was, that was the grand idea. So the guys put on a couple of heaters and we went into the workshop. And I went through a lot of the information that I'm going through now with you, you know, general health and safety, 
general PPE, power supply, all, all the things that we're chatting about. And we did talk about the extension leaks, but nobody, nobody mentioned anything about the extension leaks being used in the workshop that day. So we were finished up, we finished our coffee, and we went out to the, to the workshop to start the bit of physical training. But as we went out, we, we noticed that the place was in darkness and we walked in and it was it was cold. We were expecting it to be nice and warm with a couple of heaters being on. So we looked to see what the problem was. And there, lo and behold, there was a 25 meter lead with about this much coil being used. And it was pretty much lying in a puddle. Okay. Uh, so obviously what had happened, it had, it had heated up under a short space of time or after a short space of time. Uh, they had melted, but luckily enough, the trip then had, had done its job and the, the fuse then had simply blown, but the lead was no more and had to go into the skip. Okay, so that was a good example. Um, after me talking about uh, exactly what I'm talking about now, using the right length of lead, exactly, um, exactly that happened that, that, that morning of the men's shed train. So we want to try and be using the, 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 the appropriate length of lead. Now, the other option. If I go back to my scenario here where I was needing power three meters away and I'm, I have only this option, well, I can still do the job, but what I have to do is I have to uncoil the full lead, okay, to make sure that's not coiled. Now that in itself then can cause a bit of an issue because I'm sure you think to yourself, well then, why would you as a joiner have three leads? Why don't you just have the 125 meter lead and that does all your jobs? Well, that then causes an issue then a tripping hazard okay if i have 25 meters of lead that's lying just on coil then on the floor okay so that's that's the wee bit of information on the, the leads and the power supply so i hope um, i'm hoping you're not falling asleep on me there before i move on i'll just kind of summarize and hopefully um you know you you probably picked up that it's that it's fairly condensed and fairly summarized you know, as, as Eva said, we're, we're trying to cover quite a lot here and you know, in this short space of time. And we are aware, or, or I'm aware, you know, from my experience that but there is there is a short short window um, before you would before you would fall asleep, and I'm well aware of that. So um, I'll, I'll quickly move on from one thing to the other. The next wee thing I, I want to just cover quickly is a wee bit on PPE there. And I'm sure we all know then what PPE stands for. That's our personal protective equipment. And, and I'm sure we all know uh, or we're very aware, what well, these certainly are over the last couple of years anyway, uh, and that's our mask. Uh, I don't think there's too many people have avoided wearing now uh, over the last over the last one. But what, what I would say uh, regarding the PPE, and I would be quite guilty of this myself, uh, especially when I'm working, you know, on my own and, and over the past um, number of years, and I still continue to do my own um, homers uh, and, and private work. Um, I, I would be quite poor at wearing my PPE, but that's came back to, to, to bite me because um, I know uh, only quite recently I've had to get um, some assistance with uh, my hearing and I do now have to wear uh, hearing aids. And that's probably just from being lazy, if I'm honest with myself, uh, and not wearing these uh, over the years using uh, machinery and power tools. Now what I have come to, to, to learn and what I try to pass on whenever I am feeding, both in the men's shed and my younger apprentices, it, it, it is, and, and maybe the word laziness isn't, isn't right, but it's a natural thing to take the easy option, okay? So the easy option is, if you're going into the, the workshop in, in the men's shed, if you can grab yourself your, your earmuffs, okay, uh, and just then stick them around your neck, okay? They're not, it's not that uncomfortable. You can just get on with your work, even if you're going for a cup of coffee or you're, you're planning out or you're having a chat, you know, with, with, with somebody or whatever, that, that's fine. They're, 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 they're there and they're handy, okay? That's similar then to, to this particular dust mask that I have here, okay? I'll just bring that around so I can show you. So this, this particular dust mask, it's a foldable dust mask, okay? Um, they're even more expensive, okay, as opposed to the, the more rigid, uh, full face masks that, that, that sit over and when you're not wearing them, if you bring them down to your neck, they would be quite uncomfortable. These fold and this this particular one that I've used for demonstration, you know, I've had that in, in my bag for years, okay? So this actually then is handy because it goes into the hip pocket then easy, okay? So you're, you've arrived at the men's shed, you've picked up your, um, 
your ear muffs, you're stuck them around your neck, the dust mask in your hip pocket. The last thing that we'll talk about, the most important one, is probably your glasses. Okay, and you'll see here that we have the, the wee jungle on, on the back of them. Okay, again, this can, I've got my glasses on at the minute, but you can stick them top of your head or drop them around your neck and they're handy to you when, when needed then, okay? So, we've arrived at the workshop, all our PPE is on us uh, and it's all handy. We're half an hour in, we've had our coffee and we're gonna to start to do a bit of work on the machines. So, this, as soon as that thought comes into your mind, that I'm gonna go over and I'm using the chop saw, by the time you get from A to B, from you, from you walk to, from your point to the chop saw, you can stick your glasses on, you can grab your, your dust mask and the hip plug it, stick it on and stick the earmuffs on, okay? And that seems very simple, seems very simplistic, but that's the best way that you're going to make sure that you're, um, you're safe and you're fully kitted then with the required PPE. If it's only one cut you need to do, I would, I would, almost, <laughs> I would almost guarantee that if you had one cut to do on the chop saw and the dust mask were in that cupboard and the, the ear mask were in this cupboard and something else is over there, you'll not bother going that way to, to, to get that PPE. You'll just go ahead and you'll do that cut. I, I know that because I've done that over the, over the years as well. So these are, these are uh, they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but I've had to reteach myself, okay? And I, that's, that's what I now do. And I try to pass that on both to the guys in the men's shed and my younger apprentices as well. So it's about ease of use, okay, and, and, and having them on your body when needed them, that, that they're easily accessed. <clears throat> so just just before then, uh, I, I, I just chat about the couple of tools that I have here in particular. I have here just, um, so it's a wee list that I've taken away back from North Belfast Men's Shed. And I still use this it's because the first, it was the first Men's Shed that I went to. And it's not to say that their rules were, were perfect and, and were 100% correct. I still use these and I say to every Men's Shed that I'm in, this is their rules and it's should at their workshop. And I, I can give you a copy and I have authorization from North Belfast Men's Shed that if you want to, to use or, or to tweak that in any way that you, you can do that. So I'm just going to go through some of these and explain then any of the parts that, that's needed then, okay? Some are very simple uh, and, and, and almost self-explanatory and, and I'll go through them really quicker. So it said we shouldn't operate machines if you're feeling unwell, under the influence of drugs, alcohol or medication. Yes, com common sense. But the one that I would say there is one you might overlook is the, is the, the medication, okay? Uh, again, anybody who, who, um, who's on here today um, and listening to me, not for the first time that I've been at your shed, you'll have probably heard this story before because of, I've got the scar, the scar to prove this, this, this wee bit of experience I have. I was off one time off work when I was a bit younger. Um, I took some infection in my, in my tongue and it, wasn't a big issue, but I, I couldn't um, I couldn't speak or talk very well. Just it had swollen up on me, so I had to take antibiotics and, and painkillers. And I was off work for a few days. And again, it was it was winter time, and I went out to to chop some sticks for the fire. And that's something that I've done thousands of times, both before and, and after. But on the check, the, the the second chop with the hatchet or axe. I, I put it into my finger and you probably can't see it there, but there's a fairly substantial scar there uh, where I had to go then and, and, and get, you know, six or eight stitches in, almost lost the finger. And the only thing that I can put that down to, because I have never done that before or never done it after, was the, the, the medication. So obviously, in some way, my, my dexterity or my hand-eye coordination was, was totally gone, okay? because I didn't set out to, to put, a, put a hatchet in my finger that day. So that's, that's an important one to, to bear in mind if there's a change in medication or you're on medication, just to take your time and we don't rush into, you know, using machines to, to you're sure you're okay. And if you're maybe using 
hand tool where you're doing something else and you notice your dexterity or your hand-eye coordination is a bit off, well, that might be a little warning to you that to say then, well, no, I'm not, I'm not doing any cutting on, on the tools or machinery in the workshop. Um, so I've, as I've mentioned already, uh, going on down through the list here, so wear eye protection and when necessary, ear protection, dust mask and hair covers. We usually get a bit of a, a laugh in the men's sheds about the, the hair covers, but that's now a common, a common one. Uh, and nowadays in, in schools, um, hair covers needs to be provided. Um, I think there was an incident one time a number of years ago where, where someone got caught on, in a pillar drill. The girl got caught, uh, her hair got caught in a pillar drill. And I think after that, then they, they've made in the, the, brought in the rule about hair covers. Uh, do not wear ties, loose gloves, loose clothing, or open toe footwear. Again, all self explanatory uh, and common sense. Another one that I would add there is the, the ties on a hoodie. Okay, so again, I would, I would sometimes be wearing a hoodie, but it has the two tassels coming down in the front here. So again, if you're leaning over, it's really anything spinning that's going to cause an issue there. So the likes of a lathe or a pillar drill or even a hand drill, that that could get caught there and, and I'll pull you in there. Again, uh, um, I have an example there again, where again, a number of years ago, I was using a planer. Okay, and I was, I was lent over you know, cleaning the end of the door, and I was wearing a loose t-shirt. Uh, I lent up, uh, or brought my arm up slightly too high, and caught the t-shirt uh, in the planer, and it caught, uh, and well, it didn't do me any harm, but it wrecked my t-shirt and wrecked the planer, uh, and cost me a few pounds, but that was just from wearing loose, loose clothing then, so it's something to bear in mind. So again, they had numbers here, and again, this is down to every individual man shed to, to make a decision in this. But they're really on the number of people in the men's shed was six, no more than six people in the workshop when in use. And that moves me on to the next point where they had ropes that they placed across. So they uh, there was an entrance and an exit to that workshop. It was kind of a, a through affair. Um, so they had ropes that went across. So in other words, if someone, if there was six in the workshop and someone needed to go in and that rope was across, well, they, they knew then that there was going to be too many in that sort of smaller workshop at that time. So it's just something to bear in mind about the number, the number of people that should be in the workshop. Next one's common sense, don't interrupt or distract people whilst they're operating machinery. Use the dust extraction and air filter. Um, turn off at the machine, not at the wall switch to prevent unexpected starts. And I'll just explain that one. So the likes of, say, a router that has a locked on and off switch, we need to make sure that it's always off at the machine and not just off at the wall switch. So obviously then what could happen there is if it's only turned off at the wall switch, the next time that's going to be used, the guy's holding the machine, turns it on, and it, it, as soon as he turns on the wall switch, well, it's, it's, it's going live then, it's, it's been running then. So if he's holding that awkwardly or it's, or it's against his leg or whatever, well, that's going to cause, cause a really serious issue. Uh, do not remove or tamper with machine guards. Okay, so that's a fairly big one uh, in the main shed, gentlemen. It's, 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 more, it's more of an issue whenever it's experienced men. Experienced men can take off guard to do a certain job, as I mentioned earlier, on a, on a particular machine. But the problem then is, well, it's twofold. Obviously, if he leaves it like that, he may think, well, I'll, I'll go and finish or I'll go and screw this together and he'll come back and put that guard on. Well, obviously that's the time somebody would come along, lesser experienced, and use that saw then where it's a danger. The other danger is that less experienced men see that being done in that way, but they don't know or understand that the person using that saw without the guard has done that a few thousand times maybe, okay? That doesn't make it right, but he, he has, good experience in the use of, of that machine in that way. And thinks then, uh, so the other guy thinks then that can be done in the same way. So it's just it's just bad examples. So the only way we get around that one, folks, is just by not removing guards uh, for any reason. Again, go back to something that I touched on briefly earlier. If a machine is not working correctly, unplug it, place a Warning, do not use notice and notify a member of staff then, okay? So they have staff that they could have went to because it was under the umbrella uh, of another larger organization. 
but really within a main shed, we need to organize ourselves to, to get that fixed in, okay? Now there may be a go-to guy then in the main shed that, that he would be the, the guy with the most experience or, or he knows the, the contacts for fixing machinery, etc. And that's quite common for, for each main shed to have that. But going back to the basic point, it, it's not to be used, but it also has to be taken out of, out of use, okay? Um, again, it's back to the experience. So somebody with less experience may not know that it's unsafe, and, and then they may go to use that, and then that's going to last them. It's going to happen. <clears throat> Obviously, as well, um, the men said needs to keep an accident reporting book. Okay, so we need to report any injuries or near misses, so they can re-record it and act it upon them. Okay, similar to to any workplace there. And if one's sure about any aspect of using a machine or equipment, seek advice before proceeding. And then in bold, they have here only members who have been assessed and approved are permitted to use the workshop machinery unsupervised. So that's that was part of my job then. Okay, so part of my job was to go through these rules, go through the training on the machines, and then um, they were deemed authorised then to use, or else they couldn't they couldn't be used. So that's that's that okay so i'm just keeping a wee eye on time here okay so obviously with this morning that was a, a quite a general um run through general health and safety but i wanted to go through one or two points then just with the specific um machinery so here we have then the the, the, the chop saw okay i'm sure you can all see it there okay um the chop saw can get a few different names and the reason i brought the the, the chop saw in for, for a bit of a demo um, I'm sure this would be in all, or at least most, of the men's sheds. It's certainly been in all the men's sheds that, I, that I've been in. So it gets a few names, okay, and sometimes there's, there's a few of these thrown out on the day that I, that I do the training. So we, we have a chop saw, um, cross-cut saw, miter saw, ready alarm saw, drop saw, but it's, 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 it's all basically the same, the same thing. Obviously there's different makes uh, and sizes as well um the one thing on the terminology is that it's it's key or, or, or good to understand that there is different names um and there's no real right or wrong sometimes it depends on the manufacturer or even the area that you're working in or the guys that would be working alongside what they would call it and then i know the younger apprentices that i'd be uh, dealing with they would just pick up um from what their boss or, or the joiners they work with what they call it but the, the, the important thing is that we, we know the different areas that if, if someone in the workshop was to say, well, be careful, that bench saw is running. But they have a certain picture in their head what a bench saw is, and it's not the machine that they're standing on the side, but that happens to be the saw, because they understand that's a circular saw, okay? So a bench saw, different to a chop saw. A bench saw can be called a rip saw, bench saw, uh, Table saw, it gets it also gets a number, a number of names. Again, none of them being being right or wrong, really. That's it. It's dependent um, on the manufacturer mainly. So the, the cross-cut saw, I call it the cross-cut saw anyway. Obviously, the main use is, is for cutting to length or or cutting cutting miters then uh, as well. Um, I'll maybe just come round the other side and you will see me a bit better. <coughs> So it's main it's main use then is just for chopping the length. Okay, you'll see here that the guard okay fully encloses the the, the, the the blade. Okay, and that's released here as well. Okay, so as I grab here, that's automatically bringing the the the, the guard back. So then I can lower and make my cut. Okay, so a straight cut will be simply as 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 so. Okay. So obviously it's going to get a bit more use then um, for probably doing miters, okay, or, or 45 degree cuts, okay. So we can then miter either across the width or, or thickness of, of the timber, okay, like so, okay. So that then can be done then either by moving the, the base like so, either to the right or to the left, or we can drop then at the back then as well, OK? 
Okay. So it depends. So the two examples I would use there would be probably for, say, if we were putting skirting or auditor, okay, you would be doing one cut like so, um, one cut like so, okay. So again, the example, if that was the example I used for skirting and arbitrage, so they, that would be cut that way for arbitrage or picture framing or, or something along those lines, whereas this one, okay, is then for, for skirting, etc. Okay, it's your miter. We can do a combination of those two cuts then as well, okay. So we can cut uh, across the width and the thickness, okay, so we can cut both ways and that would then end up, hopefully you can see it okay, a compound cut then, okay, which is cutting across, you can see if I show you that way, it's cutting across width and thickness, okay. <clears throat> now, that's the basics of the saw. The saw can also then be set up to depth cuts, okay. So you, you can have a stop, and I usually would demonstrate this out when we have a bit more time out on the on the shop floor, where you can do then housings or tenons, etc. Okay, so we have a depth stop, and then we pull um, we pull then or cut a series of cuts. We can, we can either cut all the cuts to make that a clean uh, machine finish, or we can cut a series of cuts to the desired depth, and then chop that out with the chisel and, and hammer the actual old mallet. Okay, so. Regarding then the safety of the machine, there's usually a, a no hands area, okay, in and around the base of the saw. Obviously, we know where the danger is, it's below the blade then, okay, we're lowering the blade then through the cut, okay. Now, it's a right hand operated machine, okay, so we should have, if we do, and I recommend you should have, we should have a waist or an off cut spin to the right hand side of the, the, the chop saw. That's so that then when you do, When you do a cut, okay, you're reaching in with your right hand to throw the off cut away then. Now, that means then that you have to release here, okay, at the top, and when you release then, when you finish that cut, back up to the top, the guard then is, is coming back in again, okay. In other words, we should never be reaching across with the, the left hand, okay. Obviously, if you're going in with the left hand, then you're going into an exposed blade there, okay? So that sometimes is a, is a, it's a wee, um, it's a wee rule that needs to be kind of forced into the mind for some guys, because if you're doing a whole lot of repetitive cuts, it's probably quicker, okay? So if I show you what I'm doing, it's probably quicker to move that with the left hand, okay? But you can see how dangerous that is then, because the blade is always exposed there, okay? If I'm moving with the left hand, so you should always release, lift away with the right hand, and throw throw that away uh, with the right hand. So that's that's generally the, the, the chop saw. Okay, um, we have the no hands area, so we, we 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 stay well back out of the way. Now I I'm very keen on using the left hand and keeping it busy. Okay, some some machines, or sorry, all machines nowadays. When they're new they will come with a clump and that clump then sits in here okay and that's then used to hold the timber in place and that all looks very good and, and, and that's, that's all well uh, fine and dandy but my my concern is and this is a personal view that i do always pass on to both my apprentices and to you guys in the men's head what does this hand do then if, if this clump is being used at the left side okay what, what does this hand then have to do it's not needed anymore, okay? So it's it's free here to do anything. So now it's obvious to say that you wouldn't put your hand in there and that's that's clear. But if you do this a number of, you know, a few hundred times or a few thousand times, there just could be that one instance where your pencil drops in there or a small off cut is in there where you're, you just forget yourself temporarily and you reach in with the left hand an exposed blade. That, that's why I, I don't like the clump that comes with the, 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 the machine, okay? And my personal view is that I have never used that clump because it's too, my hand is used and it's strong enough that can hold just using natural body weight, then it can hold the timber in place for me to then 
do, do my cuts. And when the left hand's busy, the right hand in is free. Okay, the right hand's free to lift in your off cut, take your off cut away. Okay, you do your cut and you can reach with the right hand always. Seems very simple, but it's a common, common mistake. And, and I have experience with an apprentice um, where he reached across with his left hand, um, trying to probably please his employer to do a job quite quickly where he was doing a high number of um, repetitive of cuts and thought it was quicker to reach in with his left hand uh, as opposed to what he had been taught to do and reach with his right hand okay and he has the scars to prove it without going into any more detail okay so that the only other piece of equipment that i that i've brought in today the new time wouldn't allow just to show you the difference then really it's the the circular saw then okay now you guys in your workshop I'm, I'm, I'm guessing we'll have a mixture of machinery and portable power tools okay the the chop saw here is kind of somewhere in between quite often in the main shed it's, it's fixed in position and it has you know supports and maybe shelving built in around that and it's kind of more more fixed but it also it still is it still is a portable a portable machine okay or a portable power tool i should say as opposed to maybe um a bench saw or, or a lathe which is a fixed machine so mostly with machines and, and some power tools that you're having then to um bring the the cutter through the timber okay whereas in the like so with the like so jigsaws, um, circular saws and so on, the timber's in position and then you're, you're, you're running the saw then through that. Okay, so here we have, again, gets a few names, the, the rip saw, the skill saw, portable circular saw, etc, etc. It's, it's not just like the, the chop saw, okay, still, you know, has, has the motor, has the blade, has the guard in position here and you'll see then the bottom there, uh, the blade being exposed. Now obviously whenever that cuts the timber, okay, Whenever it reaches through then, it automatically pushes the, the guard back. And then when it finishes the cut, it springs back then uh, into place then. You can also then adjust your guard if you're wanting to do a fine cut then at the start, working to a line, where you can hold that in position then as, as well then, okay? So the one thing I would tell you about the, the circular saw, it's safe enough machine to use, but most of the danger and uh, maybe the, the, the hazards comes from having or not having the, the, the timber support it well enough okay so in other words if you were ripping a, a sheet of, of plywood for example i always like to cut that on the floor okay well, i say on the floor i would cut that on you know on skids on on bearers okay i would like so if i was ripping a length of of plywood i would have four pieces of the same thickness timber maybe a piece of four by two or, or three by inch and a half whatever it would be i would have four lengths up two on either side of my cut that I can sit then on my knees with the, the circular saw and run that along my cut and then I know when I finish my cut there's 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 no movement then okay so when the when the cut's finished it doesn't fall away okay it doesn't fall away and nip the blade or anything which which is quite common um, to happen with the with the circular saw. That's a very quick <laughs> that's a very quick run through guys um, on on the use of some of the, the, the machines, it's only those couple, but generally it was it was more um, more generic at the start regarding our power supply, some general rules and, and PPE, etc. Obviously, in, in the longer term, and hopefully things go well regarding the restrictions. Um, you never know. Then uh, I, I may be able to come out to to your main shed and give you some specific training and, and assess you then uh, on the use of your machinery and on power tools. So I didn't mention at the start, and probably should have. Uh, I think Eva reminded me uh, at the start that you know we could we could um, for you guys to 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 shout away with questions. We did have a chat at the start. You know, occasionally that can be done either as we go along, uh, and I can answer questions, or uh, it can be done at the end. So I think we had agreed at the start that that might be done at, at the end. So I, I'm more than happy to, to answer any questions. Um, hopefully, my pace again. Eva was trying to 
remind me at the start then not to go too quick. And, and sometimes that, that is the case. Um, so hopefully I wasn't going too quick where you were able to follow okay. Um, and I can answer any questions now, now verbally, or if it suits better, you can you can message or email any questions and I'll, I'll get, get back to you with, with, with those answers. Because anyway, I might not be able to answer them all verbally. Anyway, you might, you might catch me on the hop here and I'll have to get back to you with something anyway, but I'll try my best anyway, if you have any, if you have any questions. Well, thanks Clifford. Um, that was very interesting. Um, I think just with the, with COVID and Sheds being locked down, you know, it was important um, to look at health and safety in our workshops again, all around the country and, you know, what's good practice and, you know, deciding what's necessary, you know, and needed in each of these men sheds that have been watching with us this morning. So um, Sean is with us there. Shauna. Yeah, if anybody would like to ask a question for Clifford, I think the easiest way is if you could raise your hand on Zoom and then we'll unmute you, please. We have a question in the Q&A box, Clifford. I don't know if you can see that, but Pat's asking, would you recommend not sharing PPE equipment in these COVID times? Yeah, yeah, very good, yeah. And that's probably that's probably something that I, that I should have mentioned. Uh, and again, if I just reach around behind me here. Yeah, I would I would recommend, to, to be honest, um, even not, when, when not, in, uh, you know, under restrictions or, or, or in, you know, in the, in the middle of a pandemic, that you probably should have have your own anyway. The, 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 these dust masks uh, and even the likes of um, earplugs, etc., are are known as, as disposable. Okay, but really, you know, the, as I said earlier, this I've had this for. This is only a demo one though. But I even if I was using this in the workshop, I would use this for a number of days. And only when I seen it getting a bit, um, a bit growy and a bit dirty, uh, and and maybe thought that it wasn't doing its. Um, doing what it was supposed to do I would then replace it obviously that's a you know what it cost to me so I, I wouldn't just be throwing them away um every, every day so yeah everything that we have I would just recommend that you have your own and most of the men's sheds you know that that maybe that hadn't done it already you know even when I was there some of them were going around with with a marker uh, and just putting their initials on each on each of their their, their own items then uh, and looking after their, their, their own but the other wee thing I would say on the PPE that I didn't mention as well if you have your own PPE, you'll you'll probably look after it a lot better as, as opposed to um, shared PPE. So I had these already sit, sitting out, but it's quite important then, you'll see here now that what we stay in, and the, this is kept in a wee, it's just a wee leather pouch that a young lad uh, made for me one time, he upholstered it for me, and I, and I use that for my safety glasses. The hazard is, and again, we've probably picked this up from using our, our dust mask and, and glasses together. Sometimes you have to decide on what's more important because you, you steam up. I would always give the example, if you were grinding a piece of, of metal, I would make sure we have the, the glasses on. But if I was cutting a bit of MDF on a circular saw, I would make sure I had the dust mask on. But the other one on the, the, the use of, or the storage of your glasses is they can become scored and become a hazard to wear them. Um, so then you'll not wear them. So. Hopefully that, uh, that answered that one. <clears throat> okay, nobody else seems to be raising their hand or typing a question. Oh, John McDermott just raised his hand as I was speaking. So John, I'm going to unmute you there now if you want to ask your question. Hi, John. That's John McDermott. Don't know if you meant to raise your hand. I've uh, I've maybe uh, I've maybe putting them all to sleep, Shauna, there today. Was <laughs> uh, John, John appears to be having some problems. Okay, well, as Eva said, we are going to put the full recording onto our website and our YouTube channel. So, if any questions come to people upon watching it back. Do feel free to email them and we will forward those on to Clifford. Ray Hart has raised his hand. Ray, if you unmute yourself there now, you should be able to speak. Good morning, everybody. Just something on that, um, just in relation to the PPE. Uh, let me see if I can get 
get me uh, anyway. Um, just on the PPE, just for any um, sheds out there, funding should be available through your local um, leader company. Um, and if you contact the um, community officer in the leader company, the funding should be available for. There's a budget there every year, um, and funding should be available to IPP because we found ourselves in the very same situation recently. Um, because we're doing safety training, we've designed our own safety training uh, because it was the only way of, of, if you want to call it, of dealing with this right now. Um, so what we've done there is that we have uh, we got the funding for bought the masks, bought the goggles, bought the, the earplugs, and whatever else. And what we do is. We got a large sealable bag, you know, like these large food bags. And what we've done is we've given everyone a, a set of PPE. They put it in the plastic bag, it's sealable. And then what we did is we built a little like pigeonhole system in the workshop where they can all put their own things. So everybody has their own little seal bag in there. And when they come back into the workshop, they can they can use it. But just in relation to that, um, no, never use, n never use um, uh, somebody else's PPE. Because even if you think about it, our age profiles and our health profiles, even with normal flu, you know, we're coming into flu season, you know, that would only be a way of kind of cross infection and stuff like that. So get your own PPE. There is funding out there for it. And uh, that's what I'd be suggesting on that. But again, through Sean on that, if anyone wants to come back on any stuff like that, come back in and we can feed out information back out to them and all stuff like that. Thanks, Ray. Thank you. No problem. Okay, that appears to be it for our questions for today then. Okay, no, that's fine. And um, we, we, we'd love to have, Clifford, we'd love to have you back again. And um, we'll wait on some feedback from, from the Shedders and we'll arrange it maybe for early in the new year. Um, let's just see how COVID uh, pans out over these coming months. So, listen, I'd like to thank you very much. Um, I was up in the Warren Point Shed. I saw the wonderful job that you did there with the men in that workshop. And um, thank you very much. I know it can be replicated all around the country. So thanks again, Clifford. Yeah, you're very welcome. Yeah, and thank you.